We prefer to direct sow crops in our garden whenever possible, but we do have a grow room. In fact, all of the plants you see here in front of me on the pathway were started in our grow room last month and are now hardening off before we plant them out over the next couple of weeks. Today I thought I'd show you our grow room, take a look at what's growing in there, and talk about when we decide to start plants indoors versus direct sow them in the garden. Let's head in the house. As I said, we prefer to direct sow our crops in the garden when possible. But there are three reasons that we sometimes start our crops in the grow room instead. The first is when we want to get crops off to an even earlier start than we could under double cover outside. The second is when there isn't enough space in the garden to start crops. And third, we sometimes want to start crops indoors to avoid pests that are out in the garden. And the best example of this is we start a lot of our fall and winter greens in the grow room in late summer because at that time of the year there are a lot of pests in the garden that would give seedlings a lot of trouble. Now our grow room definitely isn't state of the art and we don't put nearly as much into it as a lot of people do. But I think it's a good example of how a relatively small, simple, and inexpensive setup can support a garden where a whole lot of food is grown. So let's look at the setup, starting with the lights. For lighting, we have three shop lights from a home improvement center, and they all have daylight T8 fluorescent bulbs that are 2,750 lumens and 6,500 Kelvin. This light has four bulbs. The light on the shelf below where we're growing lettuce has just three bulbs, and the one on the bottom shelf also has three bulbs, and we're not currently growing anything there. I also built two light fixtures out of metal duct pipe, and each one of these fixtures has two 85-watt CFLs. We keep the lights on 14 hours a day, and they're controlled by a timer. We also have the back wall painted white so that light is reflected back on the plants, and we're making the best use of our light. We've had this setup for years now, and as I said earlier, it's definitely not a state-of-the-art system. If I was starting from scratch or ready to upgrade, I'd definitely look into using LEDs. But the general point I'd like to make is that you can grow a whole lot of food, and if you've seen my summer videos, you know how much food we grow, even if you have a small, simple, relatively inexpensive setup like the one we have here. Now let's take a look at how we get the soil warm enough for germination without having to use heating pads. Though the basement is heated to about 60 degrees, some seeds need more heat to germinate. We find that covering the lights and plants with mylar blankets raises the temperature enough to germinate seeds very well without having to use heating mats, which would increase our electric bill. This approach works great for tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and other seeds that need fairly warm soil temperatures to germinate. Now let's take a look at what's currently growing in the grow room. At the beginning of the video, I showed you greens that we started here and then moved outside recently. And obviously we still have more greens to move outside. We've got kale, tree collards, and lettuce. And the plan for these is to succession plant them out into the garden in March and April. And this will free up space here in the grow room to start our summer crops starting this month, March, when we'll start tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and basil. We started these plants indoors because we wanted to get them off to a very early start, but didn't have space in the garden to plant them under cover. Our hope is that this early start will give us strong, healthy plants that will be fairly mature before pests like cabbage worms and slugs arrive in the garden in April and May. As you can see, these plants are in fairly large containers. We like to start plants in containers that are large enough for the plants for the duration of their time in the grow room. This means we don't ever have to transplant them into larger pots. Growing as much food as we do could be very time consuming, so we prefer to avoid the extra work of up-potting hundreds of plants. The only time these plants will be transplanted will be when we plant them in the garden. And even though these lettuce plants are in small cells, the cells are big enough for the next couple of weeks before we get them into the garden. In addition to our greens, I recently started celery under this grow light we also have a volunteer pepper, a volunteer tomato, and some volunteer basil. And the reason we tend to get volunteers in the grow room is that we use homemade vermicompost as part of our potting mix. And the food scraps that we put into our worm bins often contain seeds. And as a result, we get volunteers, and sometimes we just let them grow and see what we get. But what I really want to show you today is our sweet potatoes. These sweet potatoes are from last year's harvest, and I just cut them in half and I put them each in a little bit of water. 
And what will happen is roots will develop under the water and sweet potato slips will develop on top. I replace the water with fresh water every few days to keep it from getting anaerobic and stinky. This particular sweet potato is doing the best so far. After just a couple of weeks, we've got lots of nice healthy roots as well as sweet potato slips. Each one of these potatoes will produce several slips. We'll remove the slips and plant them in the garden in May and each slip will produce several potatoes. One final note about our sweet potatoes is that they really love warm temperatures and they'll grow their slips a lot better if they're warm. As I mentioned earlier, it's not that warm down here in our basement. So to make sure they're warm enough, I keep them covered with mylar blankets. So even though we prefer to direct sow our crops, there are three reasons that we sometimes start our plants indoors. First, if we want to get an even earlier start on the growing season, then we can get growing under double cover outside. Second, when there isn't enough room in the garden to start plants. And third, when we're trying to avoid pests that are out in the garden. Now let's see if I can find some room to plant out some of these greens. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. Excuse me, buddy. Let me plant, bud.